You know, um, unlike many of the actresses that have come forward with, with their stories, I met Harvey Weinstein by chance. Um, I didn't have a meeting with him. I wasn't, I wasn't covering a story that he was involved in. I just happened to be out one night in New York City at a dinner party, and I happened to be sat next to him. And um, we just began chatting, and I mentioned that I was a, a TV news reporter, and um, we were talking about news, we were talking about politics, history. Um, you know, we had a lovely conversation. Um, it was only later that evening where, uh, you know, he he wanted to give me a tour of, of the restaurant that he claimed he owned part of it and wanted to show me the rest of it. Um, and I, I guess I naively followed him uh, away from the rest of the group. And, um, yeah, that's when uh, things became unsavory, you could say that. So he suggests that he gives you a sort of guided tour of this restaurant. You go into the basement. Were there other members of staff around? Were you alone at that point? Yeah, you know, when he told me he wanted to give me a tour of this restaurant and kitchen downstairs, I expected it to be full of people and people cooking. Uh, but when I got down there, it was, it was desolate, it was empty. There was only someone sweeping up. Um, so immediately I realized, uh-oh, like we're all alone down here. And I became really uncomfortable really quickly. Um, I think I made some offhanded comment like, okay, I saw it, time to get back upstairs. Um, but that's when he became a, a bit more persistent. Uh, no, 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 you haven't seen it all. Come follow me. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And he walked me to the back of this kitchen where, um, you know, I was, I was sort of trapped in, in a dead end hallway and he was, he was blocking the exit. Um, he leaned in to, to kiss me and I, as politely as I could, told him, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not interested. No, thank you. Um, and that's when he got a little more testy with me. And, um, um, you know, basically he, he exposed himself and he, um, I, you know, he, uh, he, he committed a, an act that was unfortunate and I had to witness it and I, I didn't have a choice in the matter. I mean, a, a friend of mine, a girlfriend had been looking for me. So I quickly left the restaurant with her, told her the whole story. Um, and through the years, I've told people this story over and over again, probably dozens of people. I didn't, I didn't want to keep it this dark secret. I, I, I wanted people to know what he was like. I just never came out publicly for, for many reasons, um, one of which because he was such a huge titan of Hollywood. Um, even though I wasn't in the industry, I wasn't an actress or, or didn't want to be in any of his movies, I still knew with one phone call he could end my career, he could prevent me from working elsewhere. I just, I didn't want anything else to do with him. The most bizarre part of this whole story, after this, you know, he commits this act and I'm, I'm kind of just repulsed by the whole thing and can't get away from him fast enough, he calls my office the next day. I'm at work at my TV station and he calls and says, I just wanted to tell you that I had a lovely evening and I'm off on a business trip and I'll be back in a few weeks and could I see you again? And that's when I really thought this man is delusional. I mean, you, Lauren, how could you ever, have possibly thought I had a good evening? Do you, I mean, obviously, as you've pointed out, he had this extraordinary power in Hollywood, and that was concerning with regards to you actually coming out publicly and talking about the story. Did you ever feel like that phone call uh, was a little bit of pressure from him to say, I've got all the power, don't think about coming and talking about this, unless, for some bizarre reason, you might be interested in seeing me again? I think, you, I think you might be right, Ben. I mean, in retrospect, it took me a little while, but I thought maybe that phone call was just kind of to feel out where I was at. Is she angry? Is she fine? And um, maybe this is what he does. He just calls the next day and says, hey, I had a great time. Everything's fine. Like, looking forward to working with you or looking forward to seeing you again. I mean, maybe this is his whole M.O. You know, I was very lucky. I'm, I, unlike the rest of these brave women that came forward, I never had to deal with him again. I wasn't looking for anything from him. I didn't want money from him. I didn't, you know, want to sue. I didn't want to be in a movie, nothing. I was lucky enough that I really didn't have to ever deal with him again. But these actresses, um, many of them young, many of them just trying to make a name for themselves, um, the fine line that they must have had to walk, you know, to politely rebuff his advances and yet not anger him enough to, to either lose their jobs. Here in America, if someone committed the same act on a subway, if someone cornered me in public on a subway and did that, they would be in jail. If I could prove it, they would be in jail. Um, the accusations against Harvey Weinstein from these women that are coming out now are far more serious than that. 
Um, if they are, in fact, true, then then I believe he should he should be prosecuted. This was this was illegal. It was criminal. What what he did, um, you know, and his excuse that he had that this is just 1960s and 70s office culture is absurd and and frankly, you know, offensive. Um, I don't know anyone that that behaves that way and thinks that it's normal. Uh, it's taken you 10 years to come out and talk about this after the article came out in the New York Times. Uh, uh, you know, and, and as we've seen since, as Susanna described it, the floodgates have opened, more and more people are coming forward. And, and as you've pointed out, lots of them in a much worse situation than yourselves. Do you wish part of you had been sort of a little bit braver and, and had felt strong enough to be able to speak up sooner, Lauren? You know, I don't think so. I don't think it was a matter of feeling braver or stronger. I think it was a matter of being angry enough to to put my name out there and attach my name to this story. You know, I was um, a, a news presenter at a at a local station. I, when it first happened, I never really wanted to go public with it. I never wanted my you know this to be on, on my obituary. Um, and I also thought, what what good would that do? This is one of the most powerful men in the country. Uh, in a heartbeat, he could probably shut me down quite quickly. I mean, I don't know that I could have ever pressed charges against him. Um, you know, I didn't have any physical evidence, and it would be my word against his. He had a, an army of lawyers. I don't know what I could have done back then that would have made a difference, that would have um, tarnished his career in any way. I mean, would it have helped if I was on the record somewhere, you know, saying what took place back in 2007? Perhaps. But the reason I came out was not because, you know, I felt uh, brave and strong enough. The reason I came out was because those those actresses, uh, Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan and, and the people that came out ahead of me and told these stories so bravely for him to come out and call them liars and call their accusations patently false. Well, in my experience, I knew I knew that he was the liar um, and I knew that I wasn't a liar and that if I could come out publicly and validate their claims, then, then that's what I wanted to do, because his apology just made me so furious.